Hi everybody! In this video, we're going to continue some right triangle trigonometry, specifically when you're asked to find the length of a side. Now, just as a little recap, um, we have our Sokotoa, and you should really get into the practice of viewing this as your formulas. So here's what I mean. When you have a triangle, you're going to be given certain information about the triangle, certain values. You should begin to see, for example, sine of x equals opposite over hypotenuse. x always represents the angle measure that you're given, the angle measure that you're referring to. Opposite is going to be the length of the opposite side. And hypotenuse represents the length of the hypotenuse. Right? And you're going to be given information in every problem. So you'll be able to fill that in as if it's an equation, it's your formula, and you should be good to go. Okay? Um, so just, again, as a reminder, when you're using your calculator, if a problem asks you to find the measure of an angle, you're going to be using the inverse trig function keys. Right? And you can find that on your calculator. It says, like, sine with a little negative 1. That's the inverse sine. And same thing, if it asks you to find the length of a side you're going to be using the regular trig function keys, sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? And then whenever you're given a problem, you're just going to label the sides of the triangle, the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, so that it's nice and in your face and clear. That'll allow you to then pick the correct function to use, sine, cosine, or tangent, and then you can calculate what's asked. So let's do an example so it makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so in these examples, it says find the length of the missing side, round to the nearest tenth. By missing side, it's referring to the side that's labeled with an x. We're going to find x. Okay, so in this example here, we're given an angle measure, and we have two sides that we're going to be using. So first things first, just to keep it clear, let's make sure we label our opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. Well, we know that the hypotenuse is always right across from that right angle, so let's label that. We know that the opposite is always across from that angle that we're talking about, in this case the 36. So this is going to be our opposite. And then the side that's next to the angle we're talking about but isn't the hypotenuse is always going to be our adjacent. Now in this problem, the particular ones that we're using are the 13 and the x, the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So just for clarity, just take that away. You don't always need to label that, but I think it helps. Okay, so in this one we're using adjacent and hypotenuse. So which trig function are we using? We're using cosine, adjacent, and hypotenuse. And we're going to use this formula to fill in the information that we know. Right, so the cosine of the angle measure equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So to fill that in, the cosine of the angle measure, so cosine of 36, equals adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's x over 13. Okay, now to find x, we're going to cross multiply, so you should write this then as a fraction. Okay, that way you can do 1x, which is just x. equals 13 times the cosine of 36. So 13 times cosine of 36. And if you put that in your calculator, you'll get that x equals about 10.5 if you round it. All right? So the length of this adjacent side is 10.5, which actually makes sense because the hypotenuse we know in a right triangle is always the longest side, and that's longer than the 10.5. Okay, so same thing for the next problem. We're given an angle measure, and we're given the 17 and the x. So let's first label our sides. So across from that right angle is the hypotenuse, right? And opposite of the angle we're talking about, opposite of the 35 is the x. And that's all we actually need because the other one's not labeled. We're not going to use it. So using opposite and hypotenuse, we're going to be using the sine function, right? So 
sine of the angle measure equals opposite over hypotenuse. Set it up exactly like that. Sine of 35 equals opposite x over hypotenuse, which is 17. Okay? In order to find x, again, we're cross-multiplying. So we want to write our, the sine of 35 as a fraction over 1. And then when we cross-multiply, we have x equals 17 times the sine of 35. Okay, when you put that in your calculator and round it to the nearest tenth, right, one decimal place, you'll get that x equals 9.8, right? So the length of this side is 9.8, which again makes sense with the hypotenuse being the longest side. Okay, so let's move on and just do two more examples. These are going to be a little bit different, but not too bad. Just like the previous example, we're asked to find the length of the missing side, so we're using our regular trig functions. We're going to round it to the nearest tenth, okay? So in number five, we're given a 17, an x, and the 18 degrees. We're given the angle measure. So labeling all of the sides, we have our hypotenuse across from that right angle. The opposite, which is opposite of the angle we're talking about, so opposite of the 18 is here, so it's 17. And next to, adjacent to the 18, but not the hypotenuse, is going to be here. Okay, so which ones are we actually using in this example? We're using the adjacent and the opposite. Right? So you can even, just for clarity, take that out, because these are the ones we're using. Which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So that's the one that we're going to use. Now let's set that up just like this, tangent of the angle measure equals opposite over adjacent. So fill in what you have. Tangent of the angle measure, so tangent of 18, equals opposite over adjacent. Okay? Again, in order to find x, we're going to need to cross multiply. So you're going to write the tangent of 18 as a fraction over 1. And then cross multiply. So we have 17 times 1, which is 17, equals x times the tangent of 18. Okay? But we know that we're looking for x, so we need to get x alone. In order to do that, we divide both sides by tangent of 18. Right? These are going to cancel, so you'll actually calculate 17 over the tangent of 18 to find x. And when you do that and round to one decimal place, you'll get that x equals about 52.3. Okay, so the length of this side is 52.3. All right, we'll do the same thing in this one last example. So for this one, we're given the x, the 17, and the 57 degrees. Let's label our sides. Our hypotenuse is going to be across from that right angle, so our hypotenuse is x. Um, and our opposite is across from that 57, so the 17 is our opposite. And that's actually all we're going to need, right? So which trig function uses the opposite and the hypotenuse. That would be sine. Right? So again, we're going to set up our equation. Sine of the angle measure equals opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 57 equals opposite, 17, over the hypotenuse, which is x. And in order to figure out x, we need to write this as a fraction and cross-multiply. So 17 times 1 is... 17, sine of 57 times x, we'll write that as x times the sine of 57. And to get x alone and figure it out, we need to divide both sides by the sine of 57. 
which then makes these cancel. So we can write that x equals 17 over the sine of 57. And when you actually calculate that, you get that x equals 20.3 if you round to the nearest tenth. Right, so the length of the hypotenuse is going to be 20.3. Okay, hopefully if you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Have a great day. Bye-bye.